In this particular lesson, we are going to look at the high-level architecture of the WSO2 API manager. So to begin with, uh, uh, you don't want to directly expose your actual APIs to end users. Uh, because as soon as you do that, you have no way of actually uh, managing how your API will be consumed uh, by outside parties. Uh, so in order to address that particular problem, uh, you need to have uh, some kind of uh, third party component between your actual API and your end user. So in the uh, WSO2 API manager product architecture, uh, that particular component is the API gateway. Uh, so what you would do is you actually need an API proxy that will actually sit between your actual API and your end user and which will actually intercept the calls that are coming from your end users and forward them to your actual API. So the API gateway is the runtime for the API proxies that will be developed. Uh, so in the most simplest scenario, the API proxy will simply forward the request sent by the end user as is to your backend API. Uh, it could also, you could also set up uh, some kind of a mediation uh, extension or some kind of message transformation where you would actually, within the API proxy, where would actually change the request that is sent by the end user before it is actually forwarded to your backend. When it comes to uh, how you would actually develop these API proxies, uh, that's when we would, uh, I'd like to introduce the next component of the API manager architecture, which is the API publisher. So the API publisher is a user interface where you can use to uh, design how your API proxy will look like and how it will behave. So uh, most of the time you'd want your API proxy to have the exact same interface as your actual API. And you'd, you'd also define the endpoint to your actual API within the API proxy. You can also set up uh, various uh, uh, throttling policies that will be uh, applied to your API proxy. So this is where the actual API management component comes into play. And once you uh, define how your API proxy uh, is looks like and how it will behave, you can then publish it from the API publisher to the API gateway runtime, which will actually deploy your API proxy. And then it will be, will be available to be invoked by end users. So next up, once you actually uh, developed your API proxy, you need some way to advertise it to third party developers or outside users uh, so that they are aware that such an API proxy exists so that they can subscribe to it and start using it. Uh, to enable that functionality, uh, the WS2 API manager has the API store component. So the API store component acts uh, just like uh, any other store. It allows you to go in and browse available API proxies that have been deployed uh, in the gateway already. So users can come in and discover those API proxies and then they can choose to subscribe to particular APIs that uh, API proxies that they are interested in. So as far as the end user is concerned, they are working with an API. Uh, implementation wise, yes, it is acting as a proxy to your actual API, but that is not visible to your end user. So they will select an API from which is shown in the store and they will subscribe to it and then they will be able to get uh, the application credentials uh, that are needed to access that particular API. Uh, 
So this brings us to the next component in the uh, product architecture, which is the key manager. So the key manager is responsible for issuing uh, the credentials required uh, to uh, access a given API. Also, it is responsible for validating the credentials that are sent along with API calls uh, that will be intercepted by the API manager. So, the primary means of uh, authentication uh, used by the key manager is OAuth2. Uh, so, the key manager will uh, when a user subscribes through the store to a particular API, the key manager will issue an OAuth access token which will be passed to the user. Uh, and the user is able to uh, then use that access token to send uh, at, along with its API invocations. So what happens is uh, when uh, given uh, uh, when the user makes a call to a API proxy that is uh, running on the API gateway, it will send the access token along with the with the uh, API call, and the API gateway intercepts uh, the API gateway intercepts the that particular API invocation, correlates it with the particular API proxy that is being invoked, and it will then extract the access token sent along with that request. The access token will then be forwarded to the key manager component, which will validate the access token to see if it is uh, a valid access token, if it is, uh, if it is still, uh, if it hasn't expired yet, and so on. And once the key manager uh, responds back to the gateway, uh, saying that the access token is okay, the gateway will then forward the message to the actual backend API. So let's look at the traffic manager. So like I mentioned earlier, one of the key requirements of having an API management solution is being able to control how your APIs are used by your end users. So the traffic manager allows you to def uh, define throttling policies for your APIs and enforce them, uh, uh, enforce these various throttling policies against your various APIs. Uh, so how it will work is that when, an a when the API gateway receives uh, an API invocation, the API gateway will, uh, will transmit uh, information regarding that particular API call to the traffic manager component and then what the, the traffic manager will uh, set those events against the various throttling policies that may have been defined for those APIs. And if a given throttling policy is set off by the events that are sent are received by the traffic manager, the traffic manager will then notify the gateway saying that uh, this particular uh, API has no, now uh, tripped off a given uh, throttling policy. And at that point, the uh, API gateway will block calls received by that, for, by that particular API proxy during that particular time. So for example, if, you're, uh, if you define an API proxy with a throttling uh, policy of having uh, 10 API calls per minute. Uh, assuming that within the first 30 seconds already 10 API calls have been made and if you attempt to make another API call within the next second itself, uh, the throttling, uh, the traffic manager will detect when it receives the event of that API call that uh, that the particular throttling policy defined for this API proxy, which is uh, 10 API calls per minute has been set off. And then the traffic manager will uh, communicate to the gateway to block the API. And so until that the time window of that minute passes, uh, calls for that particular API proxy 
will not be allowed to be forwarded to the backend by the API gateway. Of course, once that one minute window has passed, uh, all the throttling counters will get reset and you will again be able to start invoking that particular API proxy. Uh, so this gives you kind of a high level architecture about the various uh, components of the WSO2 API manager and how they interact. Thank you.